You ready? All praises to the most. I hope y'all doing well this evening. We're just going to touch on a few things, dealing with Valentine's Day, the origin and how I got started and, and where it is today and some of the symbolism that goes along with it. Um, I'm going to pull up a few videos and some pictures and we're going to go over some scriptures. Um, give me a picture. Give me that picture um, in the tech booth for the little um, the little baby. And because a lot of times with um, America's pagan days, they usually have mascots to go along with them. They have mascots and during the um, Valentine's theme, they have, um, just like Christmas, they have like Santa Claus or something like that. For um, Easter, they have an Easter bunny or um, some, some, something like that, some eggs or whatever. Well, also in the same fashion, um, just say during 4th of July, they have this um, older white gentleman, um, uh, Edomite-looking guy, um, and he's holding a flag or something like that. That's usually like the mascots. So uh, even for Valentine's Day, they have a mascot, and that mascot is we're going we gonna to kind of pull it up. We all kind of see this same little symbol every time um this day come around there you go that that's that's the picture all right so when we think of valentine's day we think about and and, and they always have these little white babies half naked um with a smile on their face or whatever um and they got a bow and arrow a bow with an arrow and if you notice on that arrow it has a a symbol of a heart now um, we're going to talk about that a little later also about what does that symbol come from because we know that a heart don't look like that but we see them on our phones all the time um, we see them um, when people um, thinking about love or whatever they show their symbol and it supposedly symbolizes a heart so you can go ahead and take that off so that's the mascot for Valentine's Day alright give me that first video I think you need to stop that thing at I think it may can go all the way through. It's, it's, it may can go all the way through, that first video. It's just a little little tutorial here. Um, all praise to the most high. Some, um, this is actually from IUIC. All right, this was put together a few years back. So, with all praises. I want, uh, I want you to stop it sometimes, Austin Malachi, so I can um, let Soldier read it. You can. Can you read that? You want me to read that? All right. All right, you can stop it right there. Valentine's Day conducted 18, $18.9 million to the U.S. economy in 2018, according to the National Retail Foundation. Federation. Federation. So, so it contributed $18.9 billion to the U.S. economy in 2018. Go ahead. So we know it's about money. Keep keep going. You keep going. I'm going to talk through a song. All right. Stop right there. It says Valentine's Day or the eyes of February, February in the Roman calendar is the festival of Lupercalia. Lupercalia. Remember that name. Lupercalia. Go ahead. The holiday promotes lust among the masses. I might can read, I can I can go, you keep keep it going on those one sentences. The holiday promotes sex disguised as love. Abortion is a woman's right. Sex on Valentine's Day leads to unwanted babies. Safe, hold it right there. Okay, Cecil Richard, Richards. President of Planned Parenthood approves of abortions, abortions and women's health as a form of birth control for Valentine's Day. So this this lady, Celia Roberts, the president of Planned Parenthood, says that basically um, that's going to be a birth control for Valentine's Day. So evidently these people know there's some things that they putting forth um, in Valentine's Day that's going to cause some people to get pregnant and it's going to need them to have some abortions. So this is, this, is, this is blatant. This is out there. 
and um, go back, go back. I want to show you something too. Uh, and and keep noticing this little symbol of a heart it says to make our own health decisions. It's got a little heart there, or uh, what we call a symbol of a heart. And it says what women need for Valentine's Day. That says to make their own decisions. This is crazy. This is getting crazy. Keep rolling. All right. The winter solstice was celebrated for all for millennia as the rebirth of the sun and the rebirth and the birth of the sun god of the ancient pagans, Baal. We we have already seen that Baal, Nimrod, and Lupricus are one in the same. So Baal, Nimrod, and Lupricus are one in the same. And that word Lupricus, uh, that's where the word Lupricalia come from. Lupricus is, is what it's a Greek word, and Lupricalia is going into the Roman word. Go ahead. Okay, so Lupricus was the god of the shepherds, and his festival was intended to ensure fertility in the coming spring. So when we start to deal with Valentine's Day, uh, this is all going into dealing with some fertility. Goddesses are gods. Fertility. That's what that's about. Go ahead. All right. At the beginning of the festival, there was an animal sacrifice, and thongs, whips were then made out of hide out of the hides of the animals. Go ahead. So this is the festival of um, Lupercalia. Read. Let's stop right there. Child sacrifices from babies born from the festival were sacrificed during the winter, during the winter solstice in honor of Tammuz or Nimrod. So what we see here is when when this festival that takes place around um, February the 14th and February the 15th, those when those women got pregnant. They usually had that baby around November. So around December, the end of the winter, uh, the beginning of the winter solstice, which is about December the 21st, they would sacrifice these children to Tammuz and Nimrod. So we see here, um, starting early, that this holiday, Valentine's Day, has terrible origins. It has origins in, in paganism. And that's why they was having this at this particular time, so they can sacrifice to Tammuz and Nimrod during the winter time. Go ahead. Hold up. Say, uh, pagan. It's up a little high for me. Pagans in Rome celebrated the evening of February 14th and 15th, Lupricus, as an idolatrous festival in honor of Lupricus, the hunter of wolves. So they, they celebrated this thing in honor of Lupricus, but at the end of the day, what was going to happen is they was going to take these babies born at that particular time and sacrifice them in December. Go ahead. All right, the, Lyce the Lycian is a word connected with uh, the Greek word wolf for wolf. The Latin for she-wolf was slang for prostitute. The legends say that Romulus and Remus were nursed by a she-wolf in the Lupercal. Severus, at 4th century pagan commentator on Virgil, says it was the, in the Lupercal that Mars ravished and impregnated the twins' mother. So we see the Greeks were calling this Lupercal. And later on, when the Romans took over during the Greco-Roman period, they start they changed the name from Latin to to well from um, Greek to to the Roman um, word, which is Lupercalia. So we we see in this ordinance it's just starting to make up. Come on, let's go. The Roman Catholic Church adapted the pagan holiday and Valentine's Day in 523 A.D. 
It was not until the reign of Pope Gaius that the holiday became a Christian custom. So now we seeing that this is starting to become a Christian custom. The, or, the original Saint Valentine was Nimrod on this day in February. On this day in February, Ceramesis, the mother of Tammuz, was said to have been purif purified and to have appeared before the first appeared for the first time in public with her son as the original mother and child all right you can drop that one and pull up that next one you can drop that video and pull up that next one so we starting to see here that um the origin of this thing it's been pagan from the start it's been pagan from the start so what they was doing on february the 15th they was they were celebrating this lupercalia and we're gonna learn how did they celebrate this thing we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna show a video on what was the things that they was doing to celebrate this. And there were babies um, that came from this time. And what they was using these babies for was to sacrifice them during the time of the winter solstice, solstice to Tammuz and Nimrod. All right, you got that other video? Let's play it. All right, now this one I want you to stop it. This one I want you to stop it at... Uh, Three minutes and 27 seconds exactly. Go ahead. We are going into February now and coming out of January, coming out of the New Year's. Into February now, there was a celebration done by the Romans called the Lupercalia. And the Lupercalia was based upon their gods of Pan and Juno. So it they said, it said, it said Lupercalia was based on well. their gods and Pan so and Juno. Pan and Juno. Remember those names, Pan and Juno. Well, we read about Pan earlier. Um, it was a little graphic picture, so I ended up taking it down. But we read about, we was reading about Pan. It was a Lycian thing. Pan was a, um, uh, a man-goat type deal, man-goat type animal. I think they had a movie. Wasn't that, you ever seen that movie? Where they had Pan in it? Okay, but anyway. Um, I can't think of the name. might have been Chronicles of um, um, Krampus. Or what, what was it? Chronicles of Narnia. Okay, they had that dude Pan in that. So they were showing Pan in that, but that's what that is. Now, you can go ahead back to the um, video. Then turn it up a little bit. I can't hear it. So he's talking about um, what the Romans did. They had this festival called uh, Lupercalia, and it was b b starting the beginning of um, after they come out of January, they start February, and they're getting ready for Lupercalia. Go ahead. You're coming out of the winter, and you're going toward the spring season. Uh -huh. And so they used to uh, have large gatherings of young people, and they would take the name of women, put them in a large container, and the men would choose them and literally have a sexual relationship. So it was based upon this, you know, Cupid concept. The Greek word is uh, eros, erotica. Okay, so erotica is basically sexuality. So that pushed the they, people they, they towards, had this other god um, uh, in Greek, and we'll show some pictures of that also. Um, in Greek, they, his name was um, eros, E-R-O-S. Now, when it got to the Roman time, they called him Cupid. But these are the same two little demons, the same two little demons, Eros. Um, that's where you get the word erotica from, and that's the Greek word. And then when it, they use the same God, the same God, just with a new name, and they, his name is called Cupid. Cupid. That's the little fat white boy with the bow and arrows. Same two guys, same two demons. All right open sexual relationship and so that was the main issue on this occasion and this is where you get cupids from and hearts and things like that what happened was they combined this with an individual named valentine who in the roman times in the, in the third century of the roman era he was protecting young people the romans said no marriage because we want men to fight strong in, in battle so we're not going to let you get married valentine you know a religious priest 
He is an innocent person who's protecting young people and wanting them to get married according to the no, rules. No, he of the ain't church. innocent he either. Keep going. He ain't innocent either. They lying. Agreed with this. They put him in jail. He went against the state. Eventually, they executed him. And on the day of his execution, he wrote a letter to two of the young people getting married, and he said, from your Valentines. He's St. Valentines. So they took the concept of the open sexuality, put the name of a Christian priest on it. So, so it what you see, like what you see here day. going on now is what they did was they took the, the, the same festival that they was keeping called Lupercalia, and they added it to the to Christianity, mainstream Christianity, and they call it Valentine's. Keep going. It seems like it's innocent. It's like they say a wolf in sheep's clothing, meaning that it appears to be innocent on the outside because Valentine was protecting young people. But actually, it's the open sexuality of the Lupercalia. It is an occasion where more people commit fornication and adultery, where rape happens. If you look at the amount of abortions and so-called unwanted pregnancies. This is a sad uh, case in terms of what is happening in society. So, and what so he's saying that this feast of um, Valentine's Day is is this thing of Val Lupercalia and Valentine's Day is is destroying communities. It's destroying things. It's putting us in a sad case because a lot of people get unwanted babies at that particular time. And we read or uh, uh, watched in the um, Lupercalia time, they were just sacrificing those kids. So they was having those kids intentionally and then sacrificing those kids during the winter solstice. So now today's time what happened is, is they get pregnant with those kids and then you got people like Plan Hood waiting in the wings. They got um, um, pills they call the Plan B pill. And and if not, they to have uh, 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 all around our neighborhoods. They got these places where, you, like I say, you can get an abortion. And if not, when that baby is born um, around November, it'll be somebody else's baby other than the husband's. Or it'll be just an unwanted baby from a boyfriend and a girlfriend. Now they stuck and got to take care of this baby. So this is what's happening. This is what all of this has been set up. And 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 don't think that for a minute that like. During Black History Month, right smack dab in the middle of Black History Month, um, February has 28 days. Well, guess what? It's on the 14th day, right in the middle. It's, a, it's the opportunity for black people to have um, to forget about whatever they got going on during Black History Month, the short month that it is, and, and, have, and have unprotected intercourse, uh, intercourse period, and then they got a baby coming. So that gives uh, a sense of lawlessness right black smack dab in the middle of so-called Black History Month. Keep going. And what it is leading to is a society that has no limits. That where modesty is gone. Modesty is respect gone. respect for the family is gone. And hey, hold it right there. You shut it down. Against, you, know, the law. you can shut it down. It said modesty is gone. And the family structure is gone. And this is what all this is leading to. Is to deter the, the, the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans from having strong families. That's what this is for. All right. Let's go into some scriptures real fast. And we're going to show some more stuff too. All right. Let me, get, let me get um Job chapter 14 and verse 4. Because a lot of times our people will say, you know, I, I'm just, I just want to... um. Thank my significant other for um for being who or he is or who she is, and I just want to buy him some. No, 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 no. We got to understand the origins of this thing, and we get this out the way. We understand that this has nothing to do with us. Nothing to do with us. This was them. We see that they was doing this during the Babylonian time, and what um and we're gonna read about this too. And what Esau has done is came and dug up all that information, and then he he um the scriptures. Let's read the scriptures. Let's go. Give me Job fourteen four. The book of Job chapter fourteen verse four. Uh huh. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? So the scripture said, "Who gonna bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing?" Uh, Lupercalia, uh, all that was unclean from the start. Valentine's Day was unclean from the start. So we can't make that clean. Keep reading. Who can bring a clean thing 
out of an unclean. They said, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Read. Not one. Uh huh. Seeing his days are determined. Uh huh. The number of his months are with thee. Thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. It's the most high done appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. So these these people brought uh, did a diligent search. Let's go read that real fast. Give me that um um Psalm sixty four. They went and found these things. They went and found what was going on back in the ancient times. Don't don't get me wrong and understand that Rome is an extension. Uh, America is an, is an extension of Rome. So yeah, they went back and found these. Re read that in um, Psalm 64. Start at verse uh, six. 6. Yes, sir. The book of Psalms, chapter 64, verse 6. Uh -huh. They search out iniquity. So they did what? They search out iniquity. They searched out iniquity. They searched out a time to where they can keep a certain people in sin. Keep us in sin where we would be doing all manner of evil on this one particular day. So read it again. They search out iniquities. Uh huh. They accomplish a diligent search. So they did a diligent search. They 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 really and went and looked and seen to where uh, what can we what can we find out to keep these people in sin? What was they doing back in the day? Okay, we see that they were doing this um, during the Babylonian time. We see that they was doing this uh, during the Greek time. We see that they was doing this during the Roman time. They just kept changing the names of the gods. Now they call it Valentine. Let, let's initiate valentine's day here in america and keep these people in sin read they search our iniquities uh-huh they accomplish a diligent search they accomplish a diligent search read both the inward thought of every one of them uh-huh and the heart is deep read but god shall shoot at them with an arrow uh-huh suddenly Shall they be wounded? So they try to say, you know, this this little fat white boy named Cupid, he shoot at you with an arrow, and um, um, and and you supposed to fall in love with him or something like that, or in lust, and then you go sleep with him, and then you have a baby nine months later that you don't want. Keep reading. But the Most High gonna shoot at them suddenly, and they gonna be wounded. Read. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. Uh huh. All that see them shall flee away. So they making their own tongue fall upon themselves. They putting out the information for us to see that, hey, this is not for us. We shouldn't be doing this. The information is out here for us. If we want to be ignorant to that information, that's our fault. But it's out here for us. Their own tongue is falling on them right now. Go back to Job chapter 9 verse 24. Go to Job chapter 9 verse 24. So we, we know you can't make a clean thing out of an unclean thing. And we know these people did a diligent search to find out what those things were and then bring them before us. Read that. The book of Job chapter 9 verse 24. Uh -huh. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So the Bible says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So we know that these people, let's find out who the wicked is. Go to Malachi chapter 1. Uh, we'll read one through four. So the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. These are the same people that went and dug up and found out about all these different rituals and, and pagan days that, that was out there and brought them back to us to keep us in sin. It's Valentine's Day. Read. The book of Malachi, chapter one, verse four. Uh -huh. Whereas Edom saith. So uh, start at verse one. Verse 1. Uh-huh. The burden of the word of the Lord of, to Israel uh -huh. by Malachi. Read. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? So Esau was Jacob's brother. Esau's name was changed to Edom. Read. Saith the Lord. Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau. And he hated Esau. Read. And laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Uh-huh. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Three. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness. So the Bible said we're going to call these people, Edom, the border of of wickedness so we read in job 9 34 said the earth is given into the hand of the wicked the earth is given into the hand of edom these are the same people that did the diligent search to go find out about lupercalia to um to find out about um cupid uh enos to find that out and, and present it before us keep reading 
the people against whom the Lord had indignation forever. So the most high got indignation against these people forever. So let's go to uh let's go to um first Maccabees. Go to first Maccabees chapter um one. We're gonna read verse seven through nine. The book of first Maccabees chapter one uh -huh. verse seven. So Alexander reigned twelve years. And then died. So Alexander, this is talking about Alexander the Greek. And, and remember the Greek, Greek, this is this when this, a lot of this stuff was going on in the Greek time. They call it Lupercal in the Greek language. And they call Cupid Enos. That's what the word uh, uh, Eros, Eros, uh, E-R-O-S. That's where the word erotica comes from, which goes into sexuality. So they... This is during the Greek time, read. So Alexander reigned 12 years uh -huh. and then died. And his servants bear rule every one in his place. Uh -huh. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So Alexander the Greek died. His servants, um, these four generals, they, they took and put crowns upon their heads. Keep reading. So did their sons after them and, many years. And their sons after them many years, read. And evils were multiplied in the earth. Read that part again. And evils were multiplied in the earth. The scripture said when these people started to reign, evils were multiplied. It wasn't added to, it was multiplied. They wouldn't start to do diligent searches and find out all this wickedness that they could do. The scripture say evils were multiplied. This is the wicked. This is Edom that's doing these things. So uh, let's go to... Um, and and uh, I got a I got a picture I want you to put up there, um, officer. Yes, there we go. All right. So it says uh, Assyria. It's got Ishtar. That's the mother, and the child would be Tammuz. Now we read about this in um, in Ezekiel eight fourteen. We're gonna read that here shortly. Um, then we see Phoenicia, um, and that's Astarte. Uh, Baal. Did we see Egypt? That's Isis and Osiris. Os uh, um, Horus and Osiris. Then we see Greece. That's Aphrodite. And the child of that was Eros. That's what we read about earlier. That's what we was talking about earlier. Aphrodite was the mother. Eros is the child. Now during the Roman times, they changed that. This is the same people that just keep changing the names. It's Venus, and the child would be Cupid. That's the little fat white boy with this don't have no clothes on, with an bow and arrow in his hand. That's that's who that is. That's a little fat Edomite, um, baby. Then we're gonna jump down to Roman Catholicism. Now I need y'all to check this out. They got Mary and they got Jesus now. Understand that these these list of people, these people were supposed to be born um, not of a man and a woman coming together. They were supposedly born, um, what's the word, um, immaculate, immaculate. So this is where the Roman Catholicism get Jesus ain't had no daddy. That's what they get that from. And, you, and if you notice, you don't see any one of them that's supposed to have a uh, father up there. These people were supposed to be immaculately um, had. That the mother didn't need a man to impregnate her. That these people were born without a man. So you can take that down. So I want you to pull up one more other one. Um, it's a um, Merriam-Webster definition. All right, Lupercalia. It says you want you can read you can read that soldier. Yes, sir. All right, Lupercalia, an ancient Roman festival celebrated February the fifteenth to ensure fertility for the people. For what? For fertility. Fertility for the people. Sorry. Uh huh. Fields. And flocks. So this was this was uh, in 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 line with what we've been reading. It was all about fertility. Now now Malachi, I want you to go get me that. Um, uh, it's another video I want. For all its popularity, history doesn't give us any guarantees as to the origins of Valentine's Day. 
but we do know it contains vestiges of the early Christian church in ancient Rome. I want something out of this, yes. Go ahead. It looks good. The association between mid-February and romance goes back to a pagan festival known as Lupercalia. Lupercalia. Likely honoring either Lupa, the she-wolf of Rome, the she-wolf of Rome, Rodinus right. And Remus, or Faunus, their god of fertility. Faunus, that's um that's that's the festival that's like pain. So they started it out with an animal sacrifice, and I want you all to listen to what else they did. Then the ritualistic slapping of young women with strips of the animal's skin and blood to bestow fertility for the coming year. That's all I want. In the fifth century. That's all I want. So what they would do is they would um, sacrifice an animal, and they would cut the animals up in little strips, the skin of the animals in little strips, and they would slap these women with these strips and it's supposed to um make them fertile like we read lupercalia that's is it's dealing with fertility so they was doing a lot of wicked they was beating on each other uh and then having all type of crazy stuff going on so we see that this is the origin of valentine's day all right i got another picture i want you to pull up of Austin malachi uh, yeah venus read that the definition of Venus, the Roman goddess of love and beauty. So that's what that's what Venus and it says compare to Aphrodite. Now Aphrodite was the Greek form. Venus was the Roman form. So you can see they keep this the same people. They just change the names when the other people come in power. When it was the Greek time to rule, they called her Aphrodite. Now, when it was Roman time to rule, they called her Venus. Okay, go to that picture. Uh, it says Queen of Heaven on it. All right. So we see titles of ceramicists. Um, it says the Greek, then it's got the Roman. And you'll see the goddess of love. It says Aphrodite. Um, then Venus uh, for the Romans, you see, of hunting and birth, you see uh, Ar Artemis. And then the next one is Diana. Now, we read about that in, in, the, in the New Testament, Diana of Ephesus. This was the Roman name for, her, for that. This was the Roman name. Okay, um, then we see crafts, um, um, goddess of crafts, war, wisdom, Athena, Minerva. Growing things, Demeter, um, Ceres, um, Fertile Earth, uh, Marriage of Women. We see Herod. Then we see Juno. That's what we heard earlier uh, was Juno. That's a Roman name. That's what Pan and Juno. That's what they were celebrating during the Lupercalia. Okay, you can pull that down. So we're not supposed to be partaking in these things. We're not supposed to be partaking. Um... Give me Leviticus chapter 19, uh, verse 29. So this is something that we just really, we can't partake in this at all. Um, the scripture tells us about this all throughout the scriptures, about not learning the ways of the heathen. Read that. The book of Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. Uh -huh. Do not prostitute thy daughter Read. to cause her to be a whore. Read. Lest the land fall to whoredom. And the land become full of wickedness. I remember when we was in school or whatever, they, they had these little um, little Valentine's card and you could pass them out to somebody. Um, so we not to partake in that thing. The scripture said, don't prostitute your daughter. Do not do that. Don't allow them to celebrate this this holiday, this this holiday, Valentine's Day. Don't allow them to do it. They'll be passing our cards talking about be my Valentine's or little pieces of candy, um, little suckers with a so so called heart shape on them with some words on them, be my Valentine. No, no. I'm not gonna be your Valentine. We are not gonna celebrate this. All right, give me Jeremiah um ten and two. Jeremiah chapter ten, verse two. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 10, verse 2. Uh -huh. Thus say the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. So the scripture said, don't learn the way of the heathen. These are heathens trying to teach us their ways. And it was a time that we actually followed those ways. We, I, I, Like I said, I remember being in school. I remember um, buying, um, back when I was growing up, they had this, they, they, was, they wasn't a diamond. It was called a pink something, uh, a little jewel. And it was a fake jewel, but it was called a, I can't remember that. 
uh, pink something. But anyway, you could buy a ring or a necklace for your so-called girlfriend or whatever. I remember partaking in that thing. I remember buying little cards uh, that says, Be My Valentine's on us, or some type of little poem or whatever. You, you remember something like that? Yeah, I, I, we all partook in it, but this is not for us to do. Read the scripture again. Thus say the Lord, uh -huh. learn not the way of the heathen, uh -huh. and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Uh -huh. For the heathen are dismayed at them. The Bible says, learn not the way of the heathen. Give me that in Proverbs 3.31. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 31. The book of Proverbs chapter 3 verse 31. Uh -huh. Envy thou not the oppressor uh -huh. and choose none of his ways. So the Bible is constantly tell us not to envy our oppressors, not to envy those people that's over and don't choose none of his ways. This is this is his ways. This is his ways of, of, of keeping this particular day. We are not to do that. That's not our place to be involved in that. It's wicked. It's total wickedness. So give me um give me Colossians two and eight. We always read this. Colossians two and eight. The book of Colossians, chapter two, verse eight. Uh-huh. Beware lest any man spoil you read. through philosophy uh -huh. and vain deceit. So that's philosophy and vain deceit. This has nothing to do with you and your um your significant other. If you are, if you married, um, this has nothing to do. You shouldn't. It shouldn't just be this one day out of the year that that um, that you want to um, take pride or whatever in your husband or in your in your in your in your wife. This is something that you should do every day. It shouldn't be no one particular day to do this. Read. Beware lest any man spoil you through uh, philosophy and vain deceit uh -huh. after the tradition of men. After the rudiments of the world uh -huh. and not after Christ. And not after Christ. Because this has nothing to do with Christ. And that's why when we come into this truth, we have to reform our mind. We have to change our mind because, like I said, a lot of us was doing this. Give me that in 1 John 2.15. A lot of us was actually doing these things. And now that we come into this truth, we have to, we have to let it go. We have to let it go. Read the book of 1 John, chapter 2, verse 15. Uh -huh. Love not the world. The scriptures say love not the world, read. Neither the things that are in the world. Neither the things in the world. These, these are some things that's, that we may have been dealing with in the past. We got to let that go, read. If any man love the world, uh -huh. the love of the Father is not in him. We can't be dealing with this, these worldly things that's going on. We can't concern ourselves with them. It is not dealing with Christ. These are just traditions that Esau has. Given that in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. The book of Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Uh -huh. And be not conformed to this world. So the scripture said, be not conformed to this world. Because at one time, we was actually conformed to this world. We was going a course to this world. Read. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So be transformed by the renewing of your mind mind we have to renew our mind and say you know what um this 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 is not nothing that i should be doing um this don't fall in line with what christ said to do uh where do i find um valentine's day in the bible it's not it's a man-made holiday made up that they did from way from ancient babylon and they just sugar-coated it and brought it on up and sugar-coated it and put some chocolate candy on top of it and wrapped it up in a plastic bag and trying to sell it to you now but this sin so let's go on. Let's move on to, um, give me that in Psalms 106, 35. Because like I said, we was, we was actually involved in these, in these things at one particular time. Psalms 106, 35. The book of Psalms, chapter 106, verse 35. Uh -huh. But we were mingled among the heathen. So we were mingled among the heathen. We was one time, we was in Greek captivity. One time we was in the Roman captivity. Read. And learn their works. We learn their works. We learn whatever these other nations, wherever we were scattered, we learned to do whatever it is they was doing. Read. And they served their idols. So we served their idols. So that, that the little fat white babe, uh, Edomite, we were serving that at one time. Um, Enos, Eros, whatever. We were serving that at one particular time. Read. 
which were a snare unto them. Those things have always been a snare to us. They always keep us in sin. And that's why we're in the condition we're in now is because we didn't keep God's commandments, but we went after them idols. Read. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. We did that. We sacrificed our sons. So during the time of Lupercalia and when those women was having those babies, they got pregnant, pregnant in February. And then in November... They they had that child. Then they sacrificed that child during the winter solstice, solstice. So when we was in these captivities, guess what we was doing? We was mingling among them. We did that exact same thing. Now we're in America and we got um we bind each other um chocolate cover hearts, uh so called hearts. We bind each other um uh whatever it is um our brothers that's still in the world is buying sisters a basket of candy uh a box of chocolate hearts so he can um do something strange to her later on then she gonna get pregnant with a baby and then she gonna either go to the plan b or the plan parenthood or she gonna have that baby and that child won't be taken care of properly because she don't she just had it on a whim a grandma gonna be watching that baby so this year we mingled ourselves amongst the nation and we did these things. That's why it's so important for us to come out and keep God's commandments. Go ahead and keep, keep reading that. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. Sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. Give me that in Jeremiah. Just go hold what you got right there. We're going to come back. Go to Jeremiah um, 32 and 35. Jeremiah 32 and 35. Yeah, we did that. We did that the book of jeremiah chapter 32 verse 35 uh -huh. and they built the high places of baal uh -huh. which were in the valley of the son of hinnanum uh -huh. to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto molech so they did what to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire Unto Molech. So they called their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Molech. Read. Which I commanded them not, neither came it into, into my mind that they should do this abomination. The Most High called that an abomination. That's an abomination. They were sacrificing their sons and daughters to Molech. So, yeah, this was happening. At the end of the year, it was time to give them up. When those babies were born, they were sacrificing those children. Go back to um, Psalms um, 106 and um, read verse 37 again. <clears throat> the book of Psalms chapter 106 verse 37. And today's time, what we see, we see, we'll see that these people, um, are, are people that's, that's not in this truth, what they'll do is they'll, they'll celebrate Valentine's Day. Um, our sisters will get with a man, our man, our brothers will get with a sister, and, and they they fornicate. After they get through fornicating, the woman is pregnant. So around November, early December, that baby is being born. If if she don't if she don't sacrifice it to Molech, which would be considered in today's time as getting an abortion, getting an abortion, Plan B. So the same thing that was going on back then is now happening today. It's just been rewrapped, repackaged, and they sold it to us again. That's why we got we to understand this history, and we got to come back and keep God's commandments. If not, we can't get the kingdom like this, y'all. Go back to verse 37. The book of Psalms, chapter 106, verse 37. Uh -huh. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. That's, 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 that happened back then. It's happening in our world today now read and shed innocent blood uh -huh. even the blood of their sons and and of their daughters so that child didn't ask to be born that that innocent blood keep reading whom they sacrifice unto the idols of canaan the idols of canaan read and the and the land was polluted with Blood. So this is what we did. This is what we did at one particular time. We did that back then, and now it is still happening today. That's why we got to reform our mind. We got to renew our mind. We got to. We can't be conformed to this world. So that's where the changes has got to come in. At so, um, give me um, give me Hebrews, Hebrews thirteen and um four. <clears throat> 
The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 4. Uh -huh. Marriage is honorable in all, uh -huh. and the bed undefiled. So the scriptures say marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. So this is, this is what we got to do as a people. Instead of um, committing fornication, we need to get married. We need to prove that brother or sister, take the proper time out, and get married. The scripture said marriage is honorable in all, read. But whoremongers uh -huh. and adulterers, God will judge. We've been getting judged for that for years because we, we, we hadn't been keeping God's laws. God said for us to marry. And it's an honorable thing for us to get married. It's honorable in all. The scripture say the bed is, is not defiled. The bed is not defiled. Whenever um, you go outside your marriage or whenever you not married and doing these things, this is not right. The scriptures say, what does it say, whoremongers? What? But whoremongers uh -huh. and adulterers, God will judge. That's what the most I say. He going to judge us if we're not keeping his commandments concerning this. Give me that in uh, 2 Thessalonians. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 3. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 3. 1 Thessalonians, book, 1 4 Thessalonians, 4 and 3. Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 3, uh -huh. for this is the will of God, uh -huh. even your sanctification, uh -huh. that ye should abstain from fornication. The scripture said we got to abstain from fornication. Guess what's going on on Valentine's Day? Fornication. That's, they need to change it to fornication day because that's what's happening. That's all what's looked at to, to happen is fornication. When that little young boy buys that girl a, um, a card or... A uh, uh, pink ice bracelet. Guess what he want? Guess what he want? He want to fornicate. When that young man buys that woman that box of chocolates, guess what he want? Matter of fact, I got a picture real fast. I'm going to show y'all something. I want to show y'all something. Hold on. Let me see. Hold on. Hey, hey, give me that picture. Uh, Next, bottom from the last. The bottom from the last. Um. Officer, please, sir. There you go. There you go. What is that, y'all? What is that? What is that? Soldier David, you can tell me what he talked to me. What is that? Look like a uh, Valentine's basket. Valentine baskets and some balloon. Some balloon. If that brother buy that sister that stuff, guess what he looking for? He look. He looking. He looking to fornicate. And you see these things. This this don't make no sense, y'all. This is what this come to. And see the, the chocolates. You can pull it down. You can pull it down. I just wanted y'all to see that visual that um, many of us, many of us that's in this truth now, before we came into this truth, guess what we did? We bought those things. We bought those things. So now that we know better, we got to we got to do better. Give me that. What's that? Titus three, three. Give me that Titus 3 and 3. We'll come back to um, 2 Thessalonians. We'll come back. <clears throat> and Titus 3 and 3. The book of Titus chapter 3 verse 3. Uh -huh. For we ourselves were, were also sometimes foolish. Foolish. Read. Disobedient. Disobedient. Deceived. Deceived. They had us celebrating Thanksgiving. We thought we were doing something. We were celebrating a pagan origin. Read. Serving diverse lusts. Serving what? Diverse lust. Diverse lust. Different lust. That's what we was doing. That's what this Lupercalia Valentine's Day is all about. Lust. Read. And pleasures. And what? And pleasures. And, is that the end of that? No, sir. Read. Living in malice. Living, and, in, living in malice. And envy. And envy. Hateful. Hateful. And hating one another. Hating one another. That brother don't care nothing about that sister that he going to fornicate with and he going to leave her the next day. That sister don't care nothing about that brother that she going to fornicate with and go on and take a plan B pill. Nobody cares about that child because it's going to either be uh, passed in the fire to Molek or uh, it's going to be had in November and grandma going to have it. And grandma right now, grandma ain't number 38 years old. She trying to get over her Valentine. She might be pregnant. We got to come back and keep God's commandments. Go back to uh, Second Thessalonians real fast. We got to come back and keep God's commandments, man. I'm telling you, this is, they set it up for us. They did a diligent search, and they put it out there before us, but it's on us to make the decision 
to um, look at what the origins are behind these to say, oh, you know what? That ain't got nothing to do with the Most High. Let me keep his commandments. Give me that. Give me that in 2 Thessalonians 4 and 3. We're going to read that. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. Uh-huh. For this is the will of God, uh-huh. even your sanctification, that ye shall abstain from fornication. So the scripture said we should abstain from fornication. Read. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel. Every in, one of you should know how to possess this vessel. What? In sanctification. In sanctification. And honor. And, uh, and honor. Keep reading. Not in the lust of concupiscence. Not in the lust of concupiscence. Those are uh, sexual sins. Read. Even as the Gentiles which know not. God. Even as the Gentiles which know not God. That's the same people that started lubricated. Those are the Gentiles that know not God. Our people were mingled amongst them and did their ways. That's what we got to come out of that. Same thing like you and I today. We will mingle amongst these Gentiles, uh, Esau, and we learned Valentine's Day. Back in the day, they learned Lupercalia. Back in the day, they knew uh, they knew Venus, they knew um, Eros. Today, we learn Cupid. All the same thing. It's a, all a bag of garbage. We got to come back and keep God's commandments. All right. Uh, that's it. That's it. That's it. All right. I hope y'all got something out of the classroom. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. is you.